Okay, I've been waiting all day to dig into this box. This is something very different than uh, my normal videos. Um, and it's kind of new to me as well, but um, I've been in, into uh, NES reproduction cards a little bit. I only do a few, and I'm not going professional with it or anything like that. I'm just trying to get rid of a bunch of common cards that I got laying around. A great way to do that is to turn them into something that people actually want to buy. Nobody wants a $2 golf game. Seriously. So, of course, one of the things that you need is EEPROMs. Well, you can buy EEPROMs all day, brand new, you know, used, blanked, erased, cleaned, everything, but they're expensive. Well, for whatever reason, there are people on eBay that try to sell lots of chips or whatever for precious metal um, reclamation or whatever. And to be honest, there's not much in EEPROMs. Um, some of the old EEPROMs do have gold in them. I'll show you one here in a minute. But even even if you had, you know, a hundred pounds of those chips, you might still only come out with a dollar or two worth of gold. It's just, it's not worth it. It's too much. But if the EEPROM works, to me, it's still worth, you know, upwards of a quarter to more, depending on what size it is or whatever. Uh, especially if it's been cleaned and blanked and pin the pins are straight and stuff like that. So anyway, I buy, I've been buying lots of EEPROMs, or chips as they like to call them, off eBay. And the biggest one that I had so far was like 9 pounds, and it was in a medium flat rate box. It took me like 6 hours to go through it. And I, I had it written down, but I ended up with like 1,100 chips or something like that. And probably only like... 30 or 40 of them were like plastic dip chips which are completely useless, completely worthless. And I think I ended up paying somewhere around 20 to 25 cents per EEPROM. And I didn't really come out with any good EEPROMs. Um, a long time ago I bought a lot and there was, uh, was it 12 or 13 um, 8 meg EEPROMs in there. And those are still very valuable, I mean like $4 a pop. Um, I don't remember what, I, what I don't remember the exact number, but I remember I sold them for quite a bit of money, and I paid for the lot just with those chips. But I did spend some time on those chips. I I cleaned them with sticker residue. I straightened the pins, uh, UV erased them, and I also wrote all zeros onto the EEPROM and verified it, erased it again, and verified it that it was erased. So I was 100% sure that the chip was 100% working. And I put that in the eBay auction or whatever, but I'm not expecting to find a lot of those. And uh, the problem with this lot is, I think this one was 24 pounds, and I paid about $10 a pound, which is about what I would normally pay, you know, for a, a chip lot. Except this lot may be more plastic dip chip than I really would want it to be, but I'm really dying to get in there and find out. So. Let's go. Uh, wow, they had to. I'm, it's a good thing they put tape over every inch of this box because this box was not made to hold this much weight and that solid of material. Uh, they did post pictures, and I guess it did kind of look like this. I wasn't expecting all EEPROMs, and I wasn't expecting any chip to be to have straight legs. But I can already can see a bunch of plastic dip chips, and I guarantee you these are completely worthless. I might look at a few of them, but okay, here's a ceramic dip EEPROM. That one's got gold in it. You can see it's a 27-128. And that is a 27-64. It looks really bad on the inside, but anyway, that right there is the combo that I use for Devil World. Use the 64 for the char ROM and the 128 for the prog ROM. Oh, I don't even know where to start with this. Look at this. What I'd really like to see is uh, 
some 32 pin ceramic EPROMs. Maybe find a few 8 megs in here. Well, I'm definitely going to have to dump this out and start going through it bit by bit. Well, what I think I'll do is I'll just start shoveling the plastic dip stuff into a separate box. I'm probably not even going to look at them too hard. And then I'll keep the uh, ceramic dip stuff by itself. And then I'll, I think I'm going to weigh them afterwards just to see how much weight I lost just in plastic stuff. They don't weigh much, but they take up a lot of space. Really going to really going to be curious about uh, cost per EEPROM when all this is said and done. Okay, that took me 33 minutes. Now, what I'm disappointed in is they were all 28 pin EPROMs. So they were almost all either probably like 2764s or 128s. I wasn't really paying attention to any of the numbers. That's a 128. But let's weigh them up and. Uh, see what I got here. One last thing I did notice that I forgot to mention every single EEPROM in here all 1140 or whatever are clean and what I mean by that is there is not a single sticker covering that crystal window on any of these EEPROMs I mean there's not even any sticker residue 
that kind of makes me wonder if they might even be blank. I mean, I'd have to go back through and straighten a lot of legs to find out. By the way, that's that's a gold one. It just looks like copper down in there. But, yeah. That's, uh, that's a hell of a time saver, really, if you can get them with already cleaned off of all all sticker residue and stickers. Cool. Okay, this is just the plastic stuff. And I got 7.32 pounds with the box. Okay, just the EPROMs. I got 20.62 pounds with the box. Okay, this is a counting scale, so I'm going to see if I can get it to count how many I've got. Let's see, it was... Uh, Put on 10, tell it you put 10 on. It's showing I've got 1178, but that's also with the box. Let's see if I can get a more accurate number. Put an empty box on there. And zero. just had <laughs> okay well anyway let's just say there's a little 1140 in there I paid $239 so I paid 20.96 cents per chip now I'm not saying there's a big market for 27, 16, 64, 128, all that stuff, but probably more than 20 cents a piece. Now, unfortunately, this lot was very boring. I don't, I mean, I seriously, I don't think there's anything else but 64s and 128s in there, which pff, lame. And seven pounds worth of plastic is not cool either. Probably will not buy from that seller again unless there's evidence that it's uh, more variety, less plastic, or maybe just at least cheaper. I don't know. I mean, that's pretty cheap for, for what I got, but I've already got a bunch of 128s. I mean, I got a bunch of 128s. I don't need any more 128s. 64s, sure, I'll take some more of those, but, you know, I mean, I got to clean and erase and leg straighten all of these if I want to use them, and that's, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of uh, extra money and profit that I won't make if I spend doing all that stuff to them. I could probably, if I could find new ones, or at least ones with straight legs on them, you know, for 50 cents a piece, which is over twice what I paid for these, it might still be worth it. However, I do have another 25 pound box coming from a different seller of EPROMs. Hopefully, it's a little more entertaining than this was. I would ask for uh, everybody's opinion of this video, whether they want to see anything like this ever again or not. But, to be honest, I don't think I'll ever do this video ever again. Um, if the next box proves to have some variety in it, I'll post it. But, this is lame. Some of the plastic dip chips are turning out to be worth money. Let's see. Okay, it's really... Uh all seven or eight pounds of it was really just these four chips but they've turned out to be somewhat interesting let's see what I've got here is um, a Mitsubishi peripheral interface device and three have sold on eBay the most expensive one, $14 plus 6 shipping, and least expensive, $1.70 plus 7 shipping from Bulgaria. And 
there was four active that same fourteen dollars plus six and the cheapest one was five dollars plus four bucks shipping that's UT source so that stupid little chip might have some value um, if I go back we got a general instruments AY-3-1015D two active both five dollar five dollar byte now with three fifty four dollar shipping but completed listings shows four and they've all sold five dollars plus four shipping and then the cheapest one was four dollars plus three twenty five so seven twenty five for, for this chip and let's see the last two I've not yet looked up on eBay but they were rather interesting got this uh, SPO SP0256A and it has a counterpart CTS256A and for whatever reason this has something to do with uh, a Radio Shack experimenter device possibly uh, the smaller chip is a speech processor it's even trademarked as the SP0256 narrator I think I already looked up but I can't remember yeah look at this two of them have sold of course eBay is just the last 60 days but ten dollars each plus four dollars shipping just for the little chip what about the uh, 40 pinner 11 uh oh this is even with uh, both chips forty dollars oh my god text-to-speech rare ICs good lord there's a bunch of them that didn't sell look at this you even got a board here it's got the speech chips on a custom board hell he should have took the chips off and sold them separate looks like very cool It's pretty much the same chip, not quite. I don't know what's different. He's got a Dash 017, I got a Dash AL2. So, anyway, hell, I might have uh, more value in my plastic crap, or at least what I thought was crap, than my actual EPROMs. That's crazy. That's a, just completely opposite of what I expected. Huh. Just goes to show you, you definitely should investigate. Hmm. Cool, huh?